Hello and thank you for joining us here at Life Sciences Knowledge Hub. My name is David McLelland and you are in the right place for industry insight and analysis. Uh, joining us now uh, from Port and Pharma Solutions is Peter Lyford. Peter, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Tell us a bit about Port and Pharma Solutions. Sure, yeah. So, uh, Port and Pharma Solutions, we're a CDMO, so a Global uh, Contract Development and Manufacturing Organization. And uh, we're providing end-to-end -end services into pharma and biotech companies uh, in the terms of R&D development and also in manufacturing solutions. And we offer that service across small molecules, uh, finished dose, and also biologics. Uh, in terms of briefly, uh, the small molecules platform, um, it's an end-to-end -end offering. We offer RSMs, intermediates, and APIs. And we cover all aspects of the product life cycle. So that's right the way through from end of preclinical development, ID submission, through development, scale up, validation, and into commercial supply. So we currently have three R&D centers, um, two in China and uh, one in the US. And we have two manufacturing facilities. And both of those are, are, in, are in China. Um, on the finished dose side of the business, it's again, it's a CDMO offering. Um, it's a relatively new business for us. Uh, we're going to focus on a, a few uh, dose forms, um, some oral solid dose and some injectables. And we're also going to be focusing on some technology such as spray drying and hot melt extrusion to try and help with problems of products that have sort of got difficulty with solubility. And then the final area of our business offering is in the biologic space. So for us, that means cell and gene therapy. Again, we're basing it on our standard model. So it's a CDMO approach. Um, and the, the R&D and clinical manufacturing facility was opened uh, in 2020 uh, and already working on our first, our first projects, which I'm glad to say. Uh, in that space, we've got two offerings. Um, so we have a viral vector uh, development manufacturing side of it, which is an LV and RV, for instance. And on the other side, we have a cell, a cell therapy offering, so CAR T, for, for example. So across those those three those three therapy areas, that's sort of the the port and offering currently. Um, and um, like I say, we're predominantly our assets at this stage are, are in China, uh, but we have expanded into the US, uh, and we have plans to try and further globalize our business over the next the next few years. So yes, quite, quite, oh, yeah. quite a comprehensive set of services there. And you, and you talk about the future there. Which areas of your business do you think offer you um, the, the biggest potential for growth, would you say? Uh, well, actually, we, we see very good potential for growth, actually, in all, all three areas. Um, so in terms of the, the, the small molecule business, it's, it's, it's mature for us. It's our history. Uh, that's where the, the company started uh, back in 2000. And um, and even and we've seen very good growth over that period but right now we, we continue to see very strong opportunities as well in terms of double digit uh, revenue growth uh, currently and, and, and into the future um, the reason why even though we, we, we even though we're mature we still see those levels of opportunity I think is, is partly down to the, to the business model um, as I said earlier we sort of other an end-to-end -end offering. So we've got RSMs, intermediates, and APIs. Uh, and we're certainly seeing uh, growth uh, in, the, in the API space. Uh, you also see in the small molecule space, it's still quite a fragmented market, uh, both in terms of customers, but also in terms of the, of the service providers. So I think we, we see opportunity in that space still for consolidation, for developing and expanding the relationships we have with existing customers um and also um, developing new customers like i say as we move forward into apis but also based on some of the new technologies that we see um the other two areas the biologics the cell and gene therapy and, and the finished dose they are new so we're starting from a small base um but again very strong potential for the reasons why we, we believe that on the finished dose side of that of the business um, we do see some very good and strong synergies on our small molecule capability, particularly uh, in the API space, but also on the, the, the team we have involved in crystallization. So we think through those synergies, through that integration, uh, we think we can put a good service offering together to try and grow 
into the finished dose space. Also, the other reason why we're quite confident in that space is that uh, we're well placed to support the China market. I mean, I think China now is the second largest pharma market in the world. So again, companies who are looking for, say, a more regional or more local supply base, uh, I think they're well positioned to, to serve that. And then again, in the cell and gene therapy, we've got strong belief and confidence that we can grow that space. We are a new entrant, but, but cell and gene therapy is, is, a strong, is a strong growth area. A lot of investment, a lot of innovation in recent years. Um, 10 plus billion dollar opportunity revenue wise in terms of the global market. Um, and again, when you look at the domestic market, when you look at China, there's been a lot of reforms recently in that space, uh, which is encouraging uh, investment. Again, lots of new companies starting up uh, in that space. I think I read recently that China had something like the second highest number of clinical trials ongoing in cell and gene therapy products. So again, strong growth opportunity. Uh, and with the business model that, that we've approached, the CDMO model, uh, and building on the ways of working that we, we've established across the small molecule platform, we believe that we can put together a good service offering uh, and we'll, we'll expect to see decent levels of growth in that cell and gene therapy over the coming years. You know, the, the number of biologics that have been in development, that, that's increased rapidly over the last 20 years or so. Do you think that biologics will come to dominate the medical sector and, you know, even replace small molecule therapeutics? Well, it's true to say it's been there's been significant growth. I mean, we've recognised that and, and, and seen that. So hence our move and, and setting up a, a, a cell and gene therapy uh, CDMO business business unit. So it's it's true that it's growing, um, but in terms of what we see, in terms of our perspective, uh, a small perspective that we have on the marketplace, um, when we look into to, to the pipelines of, of the of the pharma companies that we're working with, um, we still see a lot of investment and a lot of early phase development in small molecules. Um, and, and both biologics and, and small molecules have obviously got their, their pros and cons in terms of therapies and, and benefits and, and supply chains, et cetera. Um, but to say and to predict that the, the, the small molecules will decline or disappear altogether, I think from our perspective, like I say, from what we see, I, I, think, is, I think is highly unlikely. Um, I think, what you can say about small molecules, even though to say there may be uh, less of them in the future in terms of total number of, of, of new drugs be, being approved and coming to market. But what we you do see and what we've seen recently is certainly a trend for more complicated uh, small molecules. So by that, higher numbers of manufacturing steps. So it's, it's, it's quite common nowadays to see something like 8, 10, 15, 15 steps of chemistry. Um, in terms of some of these new new molecules coming through, um, and, and whilst the, the the API and the finished dose might be might be smaller, smaller volumes due to the increased potency of some of these new medicines, when you work that back up the the, the upstream into the into the intermediates into the RSMs, um, it's still quite a lot of capacity required, still quite a lot of uh, chemistry required, and so and so whilst the, the uh, say the total number may be less in terms of the capacity required, the work involved, the supply chain that, that's necessary to support the industry. We don't see any signs of that um, reducing uh, in the near future. And so our, our perspective and where we are in the supply chain, uh, we think that the future of small molecules still looks to be, to be very bright and, and, and growing in, into the future. Sure. Uh, Peter, we're almost out of time, but uh, just, to, just to wrap up and continuing on that theme of the future, uh, how do you see the CDMO sector and, you know, particularly how it reflects or how, it, uh, how uh, your business uh, works in there? How do you see that developing over the next decade or so? Um, so I think what we have seen in the industry, in the CDMO industry, we've, we've seen consolidation. Um, that's been happening for the last five plus years or so with companies, uh, companies being bought up. Um, and I think that trend, that trend will continue. Uh, you've also seen uh, companies offering more services. So you've seen more end to end companies doing small molecules as and finished dose you've, to be able to sort of offer a combined service to customers. So again, I think that's a trend that we're likely to see continue. Um, 
I, I think having said that, that the market is still fragmented. So I, I think it's unlikely that we're going to progress to a one size fits all. So every every CDMO in the, in the business looks exactly the same. I still think there'll be opportunities uh, for, for niche and for companies really to play to their strengths. So from a port and perspective, um, we, like I said before, we're going to still continue to, to invest and, and grow the small molecule capability, the chemistry capability, and operating in the in the in the RSM space, intermediate space, as well as the API. So that so that allows um, some flexibility and also also allows us to uh, tailor our services depending on on the particular needs of, of, of the customer. And let's face it, most most customers are, are somewhat unique. They've all got their own strategies. Uh, and so you have to be able to, to tailor your offering to try and meet uh, individual particular needs, particularly in the service space where, where we are. We're not we're not offering a product. Um, we're offering a, a service. So we need to be able to adapt and tailor that service to, to meet to meet individual customer needs. So um, whilst I think there will be consolidation, um, I think there is room still for for uh, individuality across across the actual sector going going forward. Sure. Uh, listen, we're out of time, unfortunately, Peter. But really good to chat to you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, hope to chat again soon.